special thanks to the loving people that helped me and gave me a chance to become a new person with a new life. And the ultimate thanks to my higher power, God. 200 Narcotics Anonymous. IT won't get any worse. There were a lot of reasons why I first started moving. I felt different from my peers. I went to a private school. The kids in private school didn't like me because I hung around with the kids on my street who went to public school. I was a misfit. The public school kids would pick on me, too. I couldn't leave the block, so I had to hang around with them. I grew up feeling different. I had a lot of fights with my parents because I felt very restricted. I really didn't like myself and I wanted to change so that the other kids would think I was cool. I was afraid of girls and thought they wouldn't like me. My first encounter with music was when I was about 12 or 13, with a bunch of girls who were huffing girls. They were really friendly to me and asked me to join them. I didn't even have to think about it. I just did it. Huffing became very compulsive with me. I started doing it all the time, by myself and anywhere I wanted. I remember feeling guilty, thinking, God's watching me, and feeling wrong. All the guys on the block could drink on the weekends and I wanted to be a part of it, so I wanted to drink. I had to be in when it got dark so I had to wait until my parents went somewhere on a Saturday. I wanted to be able to say that I got drunk, so I stole a fifth of booze from my father and drank the whole thing. I got really sick and did a lot of weird things in my neighborhood and everyone knew that I was drunk. I couldn't wait until I got to school the next day to see what all the kids would say. I didn't care that they thought I was a fool. It just felt really good to know that they were all talking about me. It enabled me to say things that I was afraid to do whatever I wanted to, and I could say, well, I couldn't help it, I was drunk. Soon after, I started smoking dope and I loved it. I also remember the paranoia, thinking that God was going to strike me dead. I started smoking compulsively soon after I tried it. Dope made me feel really hip and like I had a lot of friends. I remember feeling that God was full and that I didn't need him. All I needed was to get high, do nothing. I was just going into 9th grade and my grades were going downhill. I was fighting. 200. It won't get any worse 201. With my parents all the time and I was unhappy at home. All I wanted was for people to leave me alone and just let me get high. I started burglarizing houses to get booze and money to get high on. Although I made $80 a week and had $700 in the bank, I was draining this quickly. I got caught ripping off houses and my parents couldn't believe it. I got put on probation and I felt like it was a big joke. While I was on probation, milk was dry, so I bought three pints a day. I needed to get high and try THC. I was told it was from pot. I remember hating it. As soon as I came down and was able to stand up, I wanted more. This became my drug of choice. I soon found it was PCP, but it was too late and I didn't care. I was soon doing acid and everything else I could get. I remember stealing medicine from my mother, doing it in school and being sent to the hospital because I could not wake up. They were down and I took too much. I thought I'd just have to take less the next time. I started seeing a psychologist because my parents didn't know what to do. 
I told this string that I just knew socially. I had it together in my head. He stuck up for me and told my parents not to put it down until they had tried it. He gave me a new license to use. He helped me to get my parents off my back. My father knew I was feeling dope and was going to put me away, so I partied it up and overdosed. I told my parents that I wouldn't use like that if they wouldn't threaten me like that. My shrink still stuck up for me. I conned that guy into thinking I was his friend and I really cared for him. It was me and him against my parents. We convinced them that I was responsible because I paid all of my drinking fines and disorderly conduct. I usually owed money on three of them and I was just one step ahead of the constables. I was always ripping off houses and other addicts. I stole money from my mother twice a week, usually $20 at a shot. Things kept getting worse for me. I had a girlfriend who did not show up for a party with me, so I did her share of drugs as well as mine that night and I overdosed 5 minutes after taking it. My brother found me chasing cars and barking at them and he dragged me home and my parents took me to the hospital. I woke up in a straight jacket that was tied to a bed that was soaked in piss and sweat. I was 15 years old then. I remember a psychiatrist asking me why I wanted to kill myself and I couldn't understand what he was saying. I just wanted to get high. After this, I saw this shrink for a week and he convinced me that if I took acid, or PCP, again I would lose my mind. When I was in the hospital part of me died. 202 Narcotics Anonymous I was pale and slow talking and thinking. I was physically, mentally, and emotionally beat. I tried at this point to just drink three beers a day and just smoke one joint. I really tried, but it only lasted three days, and I dropped and smoked as much as I wanted. I didn't use chemicals for a while. The progression was tamed for the time being. When I graduated from this shrink, he told me I could function in society if I stayed off of hard drugs. After a couple of weeks, I was with a girl who had some pot sprinkled with PCP. After I smoked it, I wanted to do more. Two days later I was out to do anything I could get my hands on. My master plan was being formed. I had just turned 17 and I was planning to set up this big healing operation. I started getting paranoid, afraid of being busted or killed. I was afraid to go out in the daytime or to talk to anyone on the phone. I had quit school and I wasn't working. I knew it was the drugs and I figured I would stop using and clean up my act so I could use again. When I stopped using, the walls started breathing, flashes of light, sirens, friends plotting to kill me, shakes, sweating, crying, and I felt like I was losing my mind. God, how I hurt. I paid friends not to kill me. They told me I was crazy and I offered them more dope. I didn't know what was real and what wasn't. In a last desperate effort to find the answer in drugs, I bought $5 worth of pot and smoked it to get to sleep for a day or two. I was halfway done smoking when I realized that I wasn't getting tired. I was getting more spaced out. It made all of those things I was feeling worse and I took the pot and pipe and threw it as far as I could. I ran home and begged for help from my father. I had never heard of a rehab before. I had only heard of the methadone program and I wasn't a junkie. They wanted me to join as an inpatient and I wouldn't buy it. 
They asked if I wanted to go into an outpatient rehab, and I was willing to try it. I just wanted to stop hurting, and an addict told me that I might not get any better, meaning that walls breathing, flashes of light, shakes and sweating might never stop. If I did not use today, they wouldn't get any worse. I went for 40 days and one morning I got up and it was all gone. The pain, the hallucinations, the paranoia. I had prayed so hard for God to remove these and he did. That was all I really needed God for. When I felt better I stopped praying. I attended a few meetings and really felt I didn't need them. The steps mentioned God and I had nothing to do with that. I got better and I tried to be a very honest person. I had a hard time staying clean. It was a constant battle. My old friend hung in front of my neighbor's house all the time. I turned down drugs up. It won't get any worse 203. Lot. My brother and I shared a room together, and he was still using. He stashed dope in the room and I knew where it was. I used a lot of people for support and I started recovering. I was always being told by my brother that my friends said, Hi, and the fact that I couldn't really be rid of them made it really hard. I stayed in touch with people constantly and things at home got better, trust gradually developed. After going through the rehab, I had a lot of clean friends. I had a girlfriend who I moved in with. So much had been going really good. I had a diploma, a brand new car, a driver's license and a good relationship with my parents. My girlfriend was seeing a therapist who told her we should get involved in something together, like starting an NA meeting in our area. The closest NA meeting was over an hour away, and there were only two a month at that. After we started the meeting, she got high and moved out. My best friend had been getting high for a while and they started going out together, and that really ripped me up inside. I had a dog who I cried to every night and he couldn't even stand it and ran away. My girlfriend moved out of the apartment and I felt like nothing. The two friends I had left were still friends of hers and spent a lot of time with her. I was lonely, isolated, depressed, and I needed help. Since I had started this NA meeting, I continued to go and the meeting grew. Here I was with two years, crying in the meeting, feeling sorry for myself and depressed and having newcomers with 30 days clean telling me it would be better, be grateful for what you have, and keep coming back. People who were new in the fellowship would come over to my house and 12-step me. They kept me coming back. They told me that they loved me. I was depressed for two months like that and during that time two more meetings started. I was making three meetings a week and I started working the steps. I was getting involved in our area service and started being grateful for everything I had. I was so grateful to be alive and I believed that that was because of the N.A. Fellowship. It was time for me to get up off my butt and start doing something for others. I started doing public information work in my area and started accepting God's will for me. I attended a lot of meetings and spoke very often, trying to carry the message of recovery through N.A. I tried giving away what I had to other people, especially the newcomers. I prayed very often and that hollow feeling of being different didn't apply anymore. I attended conventions and conferences. At one of these, I had a spiritual awakening. 
I saw a tiny glimpse of God's will for me, and I prayed for the courage to carry. 204 Narcotics Anonymous. That out. Through service, I can make it possible for many addicts who seek recovery to find it in NA. Today in meetings I try to carry a message of hope, and I let everyone know that if they want to recover from addiction, they can through Narcotics Anonymous. At one point, I realized I needed a little more than meetings. I heard people being told to get a sponsor and work the steps, but this was to new people. I tried to work the steps, but I really didn't know how. I didn't have a sponsor and wasn't sure if I needed one. Finally, I came to a point where I was ready for total surrender. That meant that the things that were good for newcomers, sponsor, meetings, steps, would be good for me. I finally asked someone and he said he would sponsor me and I started and couldn't come out with the words but he said, okay. We moved away from each other two months later and I had to ask someone else, and I did. It's been working out real good. He guides me through the steps and helps me to think for myself. That aimless wandering I had done all my life has finally subsided. I learned to enjoy living a day at a time. I try to enjoy my struggle through the steps. I used to think that when I got to the end of the road I would be happy, but today I learned to experience the road I'm walking on, not becoming self-obsessed with where I want to be. I'm happy where I am today and feel I'm making progress in life. Today, I work the steps with the guidance of my sponsor and I attend three or four meetings every week. I attend meetings to share my experience, strength, and hope. Other members learn from me in this way and I learn from them when they share. It is important for me to always remain teachable. I pray every day and thank God for each day, the 12 steps, and this fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. My gratitude speaks 205. My gratitude speaks. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1960. The son of a doctor and a mother from an affluent family. All my life I have had food, clothes and shelter. I had a lot physically and I was an athlete. As I grew up, however, I noticed the other kids developing hobbies. I kept to myself in my little fantasy world. Soon I became uncomfortable around other kids. I could fight well and was respected for it. In 1969, I moved to a nicer neighborhood. I felt the other kids were snobs. I stopped fighting so much and became a class clown. In 1972, I went to a school where the busing project was being implemented. I met tough kids and we fought every day. I loved it. I could not relate to my six brothers and sisters. They had hobbies or studies on their mind. I had mischief on my mind. I went to a private school in the 8th grade where I was expelled for stealing pocketbooks and undermining the morale of the entire 8th grade. I was a tough guy con man. I went to high school determined to grow my hair to my waist and be a tough guy. Doing drugs came naturally. At first I smoked pot. Then after only 3 months, I was dealing it in hooks. My first year in high school I went from doing nothing to getting loaded every day. I could not go without drugs. I was hooked from the start. I made straight F. Appalled by my conduct, my parents sent me to a military high school. I stayed loaded on MBA for the four weeks I was there, 
after which I was expelled for possession of drugs. So I went back to the other high school. At first everyone was glad to see me, but soon they would only shake their heads and lecture me on how drugs were taking the color out of my face and making me a vegetable. I resented their judgmental attitudes and rebelled. These were priests telling me this. After doing 16 hits of Purple Haze LSD, on my 16th birthday, I was never the same. Drugs were not fun again. At best I had been aware of what I could be and the pain of what I was kept me doing drugs, but drugs made it worse. 205. 206 Narcotics Anonymous. After flunking the 10th grade, I was sent to a $6,000 a year tutoring school for hard cases like me. I was going to clean up my act, take karate and live spiritual or die. I lasted two weeks the time and went back to using. The suffering was overwhelming, as was the alienation. After doing over-the-counter diet pills each day for five months I went into a mental institution. I stayed there 11 months and 19 days. It was there that I first attended meetings. I was not ready, however, and I continued to use the speed I snuck in. The doctor had me on 1000 mg of Thorazine a day. I was a zombie. The pain I felt that near was beyond words. I felt like an animal in the zoo. I would taste the floors. I would think of both day and night. I was treated like a subhuman life form. I hated being locked up. I hated being treated like a madman. I ran away three times. Once a policeman caught me running. He pulled out his gun and said if I did not stop, I'd make him shoot me. In my mind I hoped if he shot, he'd kill me. I thought of suicide often. On the day I got out of the hospital, I got loaded and wrecked a car. The next day I stole a pound and a half of marijuana. I maintained on marijuana, alcohol and pills for the next four months. My condition got worse. I could not work or do anything productive, so I stole and was lonely. I wanted to be with others, I was getting afraid to be alone, but I really did not want to die. I hated the hospital so much but I felt, at least you're out. I would rather die than go back. After a dope deal fell through and I was ripped off for $105, I had no more resources. I went with a group of young people on a religious retreat. It smacked of Christianity and I felt I was destined to burn in hell, but the women looked good and I needed some people to take care of me. During that weekend, I met a member of a 12-step program and I turned my will and my life over to the care of God. With him, I got grateful for the material things I had. I determined to go take a last chance at getting clean. I found a card with an NA member's number on it from when I was locked up and called him. I ended up at my first NA meeting. I really felt sorry for the folks there. I had been straight for 5 days except for 300 mg of Thorazine, 10 mg of Haldol, and 100 mg of Vendril I was taking each day. As you see, I was not serious. I went to meetings for a month loaded like that, then I used street drugs again. At first I maintained on marijuana. Then it ran out and I overdosed. My gratitude speaks 207. Eating 40 capsules of speed. That was my last usage. I realized that it is a serious disease and it could kill me.
I had overdosed plenty and ended up in emergency room, but never like that speed. My heart would go faster and faster and then... I 
Anonymous gave me back my life, and for this I am eternally grateful. Written in 
198, 101, 104, 111, 